is a long-time peace and environmental activist. He's a treasurer of Hamilton Coalition to Stop the War. Brothers and sisters, Ken Stone. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, greetings and Ramadan Mubarak. Today, Al-Quds Day here in Toronto, 2019, is a double victory for us. Not only do we get to show our solidarity with the Palestinian people, along with brothers and sisters in over 800 cities around the world, but we get to exercise our democratic rights as Canadians, rights such as freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of association, rights which Premier Thug Four and Mayor John Tory shamefully tried to take away from us this year. For this reason, I call for you to give a big round of applause to Toronto's Al Quds Committee and their wonderful lawyers, Dimitri Lascaris and Stephen Ellis. Thank you. It's no coincidence that Palestinian solidarity and the struggle to maintain our civil and political rights here in Canada are linked. Rather, it's a fact that the Palestinian and, the, and their allies around the world are at the forefront of the world movement for democracy and the rights of nations to self-determination. It's only a tiny minority of people in the world who oppose this Palestinian struggle who stand for neo-colonialism, who oppose the, the popular movements in every country and every corner of the world, but they are the few. And in every part of the world where the people are rising up and demanding freedom, including freedom from the meddling of the great powers, people in Venezuela, people in Syria, people in Iran, people in Yemen, People in North Korea, in every one of those countries, the people there unite their struggles with that of the Palestinians. Every week, not just Canadians, but people everywhere are inspired by the, the demonstrators, unarmed demonstrators in Gaza, who stand up against Israel's illegal blockade of Gaza, against the cold-blooded, bloodthirsty, snipers of the Israeli army. They stand up against them with only their bare hands, their chants, and their Palestinian flags. Not just Canadians, but people everywhere celebrate the heroism of the people in the West Bank. People such as Ahed Tamimi, who resisted the bullying of Israeli soldiers in her own village, on her own land, against her own family, and she dared to strike back against an Israeli soldier. We support the Palestinians' right to resist their illegal occupation. It should not have been Ahad Tamimi who went to jail. It should be the leaders of that racist and apartheid regime in Jerusalem they should go to jail. As Canadians, we are proud of our own countrymen and women who risk their lives every year on the Gaza Freedom Flotilla. And we are ashamed of our own politicians in Ottawa, of every political stripe, who won't raise one little finger to help our Cana those brave Canadian sailors when they are confronted by the Israeli Navy. When Trump moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, a vote was taken in the United Nations, Secure, United Nations uh, General Assembly in which 128 countries of the world voted to condemn the United States move. Only nine countries in the world supported the United States in that illegal move. And, they, the, the, and why is that? Why did so many countries vote against the United States move. That's because most of the countries of the world, like most of the people of the world, support the Palestinian cause. And most of the countries of the world, and most of the people of the world, just like Canadians, believe in the rule of international law. You may ask, how did the Trudeau government vote on that day? And I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, shamefully, 
and spinelessly the Trudeau government abstained. And, and this is from Justin Trudeau who talks about endlessly about the rule of law. And now we have a, a candidate, the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, Andrew Scheer, who says that if he is elected, he too will move the Canadian Embassy to Jerusalem. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, we have a federal election in a few months. Now Trump, as Trump now endorses not only the move, the, 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 the status of Jerusalem as the capital of the Zionist state, but he also recognizes Israel's illegal annexation of the Golan Heights in Syria. And as the Trudeau government continues to allow the racist Jewish National Fund of Canada to raise money in our country here tax-free and send it to build Jewish-only settlements in the Golan Heights, it becomes our duty in this federal election to teach the political candidates a little bit about the rule of international law. It's a, let's teach uh, the candidates about the rights of nations to self-determination. When they come to your door, when they send you material, when you have a chance to go to a meeting, let them know that about the rights of the, of the nations to self-determination. And let's start with the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination. If the candidates want your vote, if they want my vote, they're going to have to agree with me when we say, Palestine must be free from the river to the sea. Palestine must be free from the river to the sea. Palestine must be free from the river to the sea. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters.